It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. The European Commission announced on May 2nd that an agreement on Greek pension and income tax reforms would pave the way for further discussions on debt relief for Greece. The European Commission described this as good news for Greece. The Greek government described the situation in similar terms. However, little attention has been given as to how the wider Greek population are experiencing the consequences of the policies of the Troika. On May Day, thousands of Greeks marked International Workers' Day with anti-austerity pro protests. One of the protesters, a 32-year-old lawyer, perhaps summed the mood the best when he said, The current Greek government, like all the ones before it, have implemented measures that have only one goal, the crushing of the workers, the working class, and everyone who works themselves to the bone. We are fighting for the survival of the poorest who need help the most. To discuss the most re recent negotiations underway between Greece and the Troika, which is the European Central Bank, the EU and the IMF, is Michael Hudson. Michael is a distinguished research professor of economics at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's the author of many books, including Killing the Host, How Financial Parasites and Dead Bondage Destroyed the Global Economy, and most recently, Junk is for J Economics, a survivor's guide to economic vocabulary in the age of deception. Michael, it's been a while. Good to have you back. Good to be here. So, Michael, let's start with what's being negotiated at the moment. I wouldn't call it a negotiation. Uh, uh, Greece is simply being dictated to. There is no negotiation at all. Uh, it's been told that uh, its economy has shrunk so far by 20%. It has to shrink another uh, 5%, making it uh, even worse in the Depression. Its wages have uh, uh, fallen and uh, must be cut by another 10%. Uh, its pensions have to be cut back, uh, and probably 5 to 10% of its population uh, will have to, of working age uh, will have to emigrate. The intention is to cut uh, uh, domestic tax revenues because uh, uh, labor won't be paying taxes and businesses are going out of business. The intention is to lower the uh, government's revenues by so much that Greece will have to sell off even more of its public domain to foreign creditors. So basically, it's a smash and grab exercise. And uh, the role of Cyprus uh, is not to represent the Greeks uh, because the uh, Troika has said, the election doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the people vote for. Either you do what we say or we will smash your banking system. So Cyprus's job is just to say, yes, I'll do whatever you want. Uh, I want to stay in power uh, rather than calling an election. Right. Michael, you dedicated almost three chapters in your book, Killing the Host, uh, to how the IMF economists actually knew that Greece will not be able to pay back its foreign debt, but yet it went ahead and made these huge loans to Greece. This star is starting to sound like, you know, the mortgage fraud scandal, uh, where banks were lending people money when they knew they couldn't be paying uh, it back uh, to buy houses and so on. Is it similar? Well, the basic principle is the same. If a creditor makes a loan to either a country or to a home buyer, knowing that there's no way in which uh, the person can pay, who should bear the uh, responsibility for this? Should the bad lender or irresponsible uh, bondholder have to pay, or should the Greek uh, people have to pay? Well, the Greek, uh, the IMF economist said, uh, Greece can't pay, and under the IMF rules, we're not allowed to make loans to countries that have no chance of uh, repaying in the foreseeable future. And so the uh, then president of the IMF, uh, Dominique Strauss-Kahn, said, well, we're going to have a new rule, and that's a systemic uh, problem, uh, rule. And that is, if, if Greece doesn't repay, this will cause problems for the economic system, defined as the international bankers and bondholders and European uh, Union budget, then uh, the IMF can make the loan. Well, this poses a question in international law. If the problem is systemic, not Greece, and it's a system that's being rescued, why should the Greek workers have to dismantle their economy? Why should Greece, a sovereign nation, have to dismantle its economy 
in order to pay uh, and rescue the banking system that is guaranteed to continue to uh, cause more and more austerity, to, uh, guaranteed to uh, turn the Eurozone into a dead zone. Why should Greece be blamed for the bad, malstructured European rules? That's the uh, moral principle that's at stake in all this. Michael, the New York Times recently published an article titled IMF Torn Over Whether to Bail Out Greece Once Again. It essentially describes the IMF as being sympathetic towards Greece, uh, in spite of the fact, as you say, they knew that Greece could not pay back this money when it first lent it the money with the Troika. Um, but right now, uh, IMF sounds so rational and thoughtful about the Greek people. Is this the case? Well, uh, for the last two years, Yanis Varoufakis, who was uh, the finance minister under Syriza, has said that every time he talked to uh, uh, the IMF heads, uh, Christine Lagarde and others, they were sympathetic. And they said, I'm terribly sorry we have to destroy your economy. We, I feel your pain, but we're going to destroy your economy. Uh, uh, there's nothing we can do about it. We're only following orders. I, uh, and the orders are including from Wall Street and from... Uh, uh, the Eurozone that uh, uh, have bought Greek bonds. Uh, so being sympathetic, feeling their pain, doesn't really mean anything if the IMF says, oh, we know it's a disaster, we're going to screw you anyway, because that's our job. We're the IMF. Our job is to impose austerity. Our job is to shrink economies, not help them grow. Our constituency are the bondholders and banks. So uh, who, somebody's going to have to suffer. Should it be the wealthy billionaires and the bankers and the bondholders, or should it be the work, Greek workers? Well, we, the Greek workers aren't our constituency, so we feel your pain, but it's, we'd rather you suffer than our constituency. So this is uh, the usual uh, New York Times hypocrisy, pretending that the IMF really uh, would, uh, is feeling bad about what it's doing. Uh, if it felt bad, it would have done what the IMF European staff did a few years ago after the first loan. They'd resign in protest. And they'd write about it and go public and say, this system is completely corrupt. The IMF is working for the bankers against the interest of its member countries. Uh, and if they don't do that, then they're not really sympathetic at all. They're just hypocritical. Right. And then um, uh, I know that, uh, that the European Commission is holding up Greece as an example in order to uh, discourage um, other uh, member nations in the periphery of Europe to, so that they don't default on their loans. Um, explain that to me and why is Greece being held up as a, an example here? It, it, it's being held an example for the same reason that the United States went into Libya and bombed uh, Syria. Uh, it's to show that if, uh, we can destroy you if you don't do what we say. Uh, if uh, Spain or Italy or Portugal seeks not to pay its debts, it will be, its banking system will be destroyed, its currency system will be destroyed, and the, uh, the, basically the principle is that finance is the new form of warfare. You can now destroy a country's economy, not by invading it, you don't even have to bomb it as uh, you've done in the Near East. All you have to do is uh, uh, withdraw all credit from the banking system, isolate it economically from making payments to foreign countries so that you essentially put sanctions on. You'll treat uh, uh, Greece like uh, they've treated Iran or uh, uh, other, uh, other countries. So essentially, they have light, we have life and death power over you. So the demonstration effect is not only to stop Greece, but to, to stop countries from uh, doing what uh, Marine Le Pen is trying to do in France and withdraw from this uh, Eurozone, which is uh, basically the class war back in business. The class war of finance against labor, imposing austerity, imposing shrinking living standards, and uh, lowering wages and uh, cutting back uh, social spending. So uh, it's demonstrating who's uh, the winner in uh, this economic warfare that's taking place. And then why is the Greek uh, population still supportive of Syriza in spite of all of this? I mean, there's literally, uh, not only have they as a population been cut to 
you know, no social safety net, no social security, and yet the Syriza government keeps getting supported, elected in referendums, and uh, and they seem to be able to maintain power in spite of these austerity measures. Why is that happening? Well, that's the great tragedy. Uh, they initially uh, supported Syriza because it promised not to uh, surrender. Uh, in this war to actually fight back. And the plan was uh, not to pay the debts, uh, even if this led Europe to uh, uh, force Greece out of the uh, European Union. In order to do this, however, uh, what, uh, what Yanis Varoufakis and uh, uh, other his uh, advisors, such as Jamie Galbraith, wanted to do was saying, look, if we're going to not pay the debt and we're going to be uh, expelled from the Eurozone, we have to have <coughs> our own currency. We have to have our, our, our own banking system, and it takes almost a year to put in place your own physical currency, your own means of uh, reprogramming the ATM machines so that people can use it, and reprogramming uh, the banking system. You also need a contingency plan for if uh, the European Union wrecks uh, the Greek banks, which basically have been the tool of the oligarchy in Greece, uh, the uh, government is going to have to take over, over these banks and socialize them and uh, use them for uh, public purposes. Uh, unfortunately, Cyprus never gave Varoufakis uh, and his staff uh, the go-ahead and uh, ended up double-crossing them after the referendum uh, two years ago that said, don't, uh, don't surrender. And uh, uh, that led to Varoufakis uh, resigning from the government. And Cyprus uh, decided that uh, when it all came down to things, he really just wanted to be reelected. So he turned out to be just a politician, uh, realizing that in order to be a politician, you have to represent the invader. You have to be, you know, uh, be become a client uh, politician. And his clientele is now the European Union and the IMF and the bondholders, not the Greeks. Well, what that means is that if there is an election in Greece, uh, his part, people are not going to vote for him again. He knows that. He's trying to prevent an election. And uh, we'll, we'll know, uh, I think, on the uh, later this month, uh, the Greek parliament is going to have to vote on whether or not to uh, uh, shrink the economy further and cut pensions even more. And if uh, there are defections from uh, Cyprus's Syriza party, there will be an election and he'll be out of uh, office. Uh, I won't say out of power because he has no power whatsoever, but out of office. And uh, there will probably have to be a new party uh, created if there's going to be any hope of uh, withstanding uh, the threats that the European uh, union is making to uh, uh, destroy Greece's economy if it doesn't succumb to the austerity program and step up its privatization and sell off even more assets to the bondholders. And uh, finally, Michael, why did uh, the Greek government uh, remove the option of Grexit uh, from the table in order to move forward? It, uh, in order to exit uh, the Eurozone, you're using its currency, you have to have your own currency. And the, uh, the reason uh, uh, it uh, uh, agreed to stay in was it had made no preparation at all for withdrawing. Imagine if you're a, a state in the United States and you're saying we have to, we want to withdraw uh, from uh, the United States. You have to have your own currency. You have to have your own banking system. You have to have your own constitution. There was no attempt to put a uh, real thought behind what their political program was. And uh, they, so they were not prepared, and they still have not taken any steps at all uh, to prepare uh, for what they're doing. And they haven't made any attempt to justify non-payment of the debt uh, under international law, the law of odious debt, uh, or uh, given an actual reason why uh, they're not paying. Uh, the Greek government has not said that no country should be obliged to uh, disregard its democratic uh, uh, voting and to dismantle its public sector and give up its sovereignty to bondholders. And no country should be obliged to pay foreign creditors if the price of that is shrinking and self-destruction of that economy. They haven't translated this uh, political uh, uh, program of not paying into what this means economically 
what it means in practice to cede sovereignty to the Brussels bureaucracy, meaning the European Central Bank on behalf of its uh, bondholders. All right, Michael, we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, it looks like it's going to get more heated uh, in uh, Greece, at least the people and the movements are planning to protest this new deal. So I thank you so much for joining us and hope you can join us again. And I understand you're on your way to, to Greece in a few weeks um, and we'll be expecting a report back from you about what, you're, what you find there. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.